It's the Tony Tone Show on Vintage Sound 93.1 FM out of Muscatine, Iowa. I am excited, to put it lightly, <laughs> for my next guest. It's the second time he's joined me on the radio. What can I say about Stephen Van Zant? He has been friends with Bruce Springsteen for longer than I've been alive. Together, in the Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, they have done incredible things. But then he also has this other other side of him, where Stephen Van Zant is a radio host of Little Stephen's Underground Garage, Sunday nights, 8 till 10, right here on the radio. He's a record producer. He has a record label. He's got side projects. And by the way, a pretty good actor. Silvio from Sopranos, and then he had his own show, Lily Hammer, on Netflix. The Jack of All Trades is on the MPW Digital TV Celebrity Hotline. Steven Van Zant. Tony. Steven Van Zant. What's up, buddy? How are you, baby? I'm so good, man. I, I just have to say, um, I want to start out the conversation by saying thank you. Um, 2016 was a pretty cool year. I got to see your, yourself and Bruce uh, perform twice, in, once in Milwaukee and once in my hometown of Chicago. And my wife and I got to say hi at the show in Chicago, and I, I appreciate that so much. You're you're so kind and generous with your time. And, and then I got to watch you guys play an almost four hour long concert, and I wondered how do they do it? How do you do? It? I don't understand. <laughs> well, it's my pleasure, man, meeting you. Um, you know, yeah, I don't understand either. Uh, you try <laughs> you try not to think about it too much. You know, <laughs> uh, it's yeah. it's just like one of those things. It's. Uh, uh, it was an experience, and uh, for my wife, it was her first time uh, seeing the band, and, and she just enjoyed every minute of it, as did I. And, and to be uh, nice, uh, I don't. There's just so much energy, and I wonder, you know, you, you have to feel it when you're on stage, right? I mean, when the crowd's just so into everything that's going on. Well, yeah, that that's what that's what keeps you going, you know. Um, it would be a really tough four-hour show if the crowd was not into it. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, that would be really kind of tricky. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an energy exchange, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, so the crowd keeps you going, we keep them going, and uh, so that's how it works. I have to tell you that one of my favorite uh, moments about working at this radio station is when I was able to receive in the mail, uh, the Darlene Love album, and then be able to turn around and, Stephen, we played the entire thing and we still do play songs off of it. Um, uh, great. It's, uh, talk about her for a second. I mean, that was such an important thing to get done. And that was, that was like her first studio record. Isn't that true? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, she had done some, some other little things that never really got heard, you know, or never got released. But uh, really it was her first legitimate album, believe it or not, after, you know, whatever, 50 years or whatever it was. And, uh, you know, we had been trying to work together for many years. Um, we, 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 did a, we did a song for Home Alone 2, um, the mm -hmm. Christmas song I wrote, that Chris Columbus, uh, you know, needed, needed a song for, for Home Alone 2. So that was something we did back in, uh, well, whenever that was, early 90s, I guess. Yeah. So, um, and, then, and then, you know, we just, just never really quite, found a way to do it until uh until uh that last last year you know and, and i just felt like man it's now or never you know i gotta catch her well you know she's still fantastic and and people just don't know about her and you know she's the greatest singer in the world as far as i'm concerned mm -hmm. and uh literally and, and you know I, I just gotta i just gotta do this so i'm like the time is never gonna be right let's, let's just do it you know let's right. do it right now so um I mean, I got my own radio station. I got my own record company. You know what I mean? Like, let's just do it. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, maybe nobody will ever hear it or whatever. But but let's just get it done. And uh, very to my to my surprise, Columbia Records, you know, put it out. Man, it was really what a wonderful. Uh, you know, I'll never I'll never forget that. You know, that was that was quite a uh, quite a nice thing that they did that and. Uh, you know, I think the oldest person they signed before her was like 25. You know. Wow. So you know, yeah, we, you know, we beat that like by 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you know, it's just, uh, it was just wonderful to have somebody that good, you know, on a major label and 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 be able to you know get it out there. So, you know, it was, it was I I got really you know I got really carried away with it. I mean, I we didn't work every single day, but it mm -hmm. took me a year. Yeah, I was gonna say, and it was so it's so good, and 
you know, you can rest assured the people that listen to this radio station, and and just to give you some background, I have 100% local control of the playlist. So when I say that I played the whole thing, I mean it, and it was received it was received incredibly well, Stephen, to the point where I had people stopping me when I was out and asking about that record, and I uh, and I had to, you know, I pointed them to to pick it up, and and it was so wonderful in March of this year when I first met you and you signed that record that was. It was such a gracious thing that you did because I, I, I and I have it on vinyl, which is incredible that they sent it to me on vinyl, and I, I, I it's one of my prized possessions now because it's just so good. And uh, well, thank you. Yeah, no, I was very proud of that. And uh, all the songwriters really, you know, rose to the occasion. You know, they all wrote songs for her, and uh, you know, the greatest writers, you know, Elvis Costello and mm-hmm. Jim Webb, and you know, Cynthia Wilde, Barry Mann, and Bruce, and mm-hmm. you know, just so many. So many great writers uh, contributed to it, and uh, you know, it was a it was a little bit of pressure, you know, to try and equal, you know, her talent, you know, what I mean, sure. to, just to do something that's as great as she is, and uh, we certainly we certainly uh, gave it a shot, you know. So you put that out in 2015, and now where are you at with uh, with the Disciples of Soul in that record? Is that in the recording phase or yeah, what? I'm recording it right now, wow. and uh, you know, it's the first record in a long time, and uh, you know, I'm almost uh, I'm about halfway, and I'm going to get it out for summer. It's and um, looks like East Street Band is not going to tour in the summer, so mm-hmm. I, I might do my own tour. Oh my gosh, okay. that's great! Yeah, yeah. I, I. So when it came down, I don't know when you have time to do that record. So, have you been working on it for a while, the the Disciples no. of Soul, or no? No. What happens? What we we were over in London, yeah. um, and I was I was talking to the promoter over there, and and, and uh, this guy Leo Green, this crazy promoter, and he says, "When you when you come back to London?" I said, "Well, I come back." Uh, you know, we usually go back uh, for my wife's birthday every year, early November. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, uh, oh, and, and then I said to him, I said, but this year we're, we're coming a week earlier because uh, Bill Wyman invited me to his uh, 80th birthday party, right? Mm-hmm. So he says, well, if you're coming for Bill Wyman's birthday party, uh, that's the same week my blues festival is. Mm-hmm. Why don't you put, it, put, put a band together and, 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 and headline one of the nights, you know? Yeah. And I just, it was just like the right time, you know, I just felt like, well, let me, let me just, you know, give this a shot. So I, I threw a band together. We rehearsed uh, for a week or two. Got back from London, like whatever that was, two, three, four weeks ago, and um, and decided, uh, I don't know, let me, let me make a, let me try making a record here. And uh, obviously, I don't have time to write an entire record, so maybe I'll just cover myself, you know, <laughs> and uh, you know, kind of cover songs I've written for other people. And that's what I did. I mean, it's going to be two, two new things on there. But uh, the rest are all covers, and uh, it's coming out good. So I mean, I went back to my original soul music kind of roots, and uh, it's going to be, you know, we, we did the show, the same show we did in London, I'm going to try and do this summer, if I can, which was five horns and wow. three three girls singing background, you know, yeah, like a 15-piece band. Holy cow. You know, it's real the real thing, you know, so... Um, you know, kind of a re- return, return to the roots, and uh, it's, it's it's exciting. You know, it's fun. So when you take on songs that you, you had written for other people, is that I don't know how to, I don't want to say was it weird, but if you had not performed them yourself ever, what? How did you approach it? Because you know, those are those are tunes that maybe are a few years old, and if you've never you know played them, you just wrote them and kind of passed them on. Was it was it easy to select the songs that you wanted to do? Well, you know, there's quite a few to pick from, and, and you know, I, I felt, you know, what resonated most with me, you know, I just tried to try to, you know, narrow it down to what was working for me and what held held up the the best, and uh, you know, it was quite a few, quite quite a few actually. So, so, uh, you know, I got some some jukes things, some things I did for the Breakers and Cocktail Slippers and uh, uh, Jimmy Barnes in Australia and uh, Carry U.S. Bonds, you know, so sure. you know. Quite a few to pick from, and uh, it's coming out good. You know, some some of the arrangements are uh, are going to be quite different. Uh, you know, and there's a few that are uh, similar, uh, but that's just with me me singing them. You know, but most of the most of the time, the arrangements are uh, a little bit different than the original. You know, the original artist that did it. So uh, you know, there's a creative element to it, and I made it I made it work conceptually. There's like a, a bit of a concept going on. 
sure. with the record. And it also had to do with the selections, you know. So, because um, all, all my records were very conceptual back in the old days. Mm-hmm. My, you know, my 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 five solo albums are very very uh, all, all thematic, uh, very very linear uh, lyric wise. And uh, so this is a little bit a little bit unique in that in that sense is that it's not part of those five records that I outlined before I did any of them. I mm-hmm. outlined all five of those albums. Uh, this one is a stand standalone kind of uh, return to the to you know to soul music kind of uh, and 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 also a return to that sort of uh, sensibility you know that sort of mm-hmm. ethos that 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 kind of uh, you know that soul music meets gospel you mm-hmm. know uh, meets rock and roll sort of area that I kind of created with the Jukes you know kind of going back to that I- like I did on my first album. Yeah, and I can't wait to hear it and and just know again that we can play it here. I mean, it's that's a that's a no brainer for me. <laughs> that's something that <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was a hundred of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's interesting, Stephen, and I don't know if you heard this, but uh, somebody shared with me that last week in particular, vinyl sales outsold digital music. So maybe there's maybe there is hope that some of these uh, these these places that only play you know the same two hundred songs are starting to. Starting to change a little bit. Um, I want to talk about Wicked Cool Records, uh, 10 years of it, and some releases coming soon. Kurt Baker combo uh, that came out in October, and then there's a new one from Wildlife in January. So um, 10 years ago when Wicked Cool Records uh, is born, do you look down the road and think that you'll be celebrating a 5 and a 10-year anniversary and then a 15 and a 20? <laughs> yeah, why not? Sure, you know. <laughs> uh, it's not... Uh... It's something that you you know. It only got interrupted a little bit by the fact that the record business ended. <laughs> you know, I mean that was a little bit of a setback. But uh, other than that, you know, yeah, we got we got those coming. We got uh, Richard and Young Lions is finally going to be coming. Uh, looks like May, uh, which is uh, something that's uh, very very close to my heart. Uh, a group that was. Um, uh, from the '60s, actually, and and uh, and, and uh, reformed, and then uh, we we cut an album just before uh, the lead singer Richard Tepp uh, died. Wow. Uh, yeah, some 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 years back now, and um, we put it aside for a minute. But then you know we we listened to it recently and said you know this stuff is so good, mm-hmm. it really needs to come out as a you know a tribute to Richard. Uh, so. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna do that next year also. Uh, that's coming out. So that'll be coming out. Right around the same time as my my record, probably. Um, so we're in a spring spring period. So yeah, we got we got lots of choices. We got all kinds of great new new bands uh, that we could pick from. But uh, you yeah, know, we got a new new uh, new distribution deal with uh, Orchard, and uh, so you know, we're we're back in business. You know. No, I love it, and it doesn't hurt to have little Stevens Underground Garage radio show either. By the way, <laughs> well, that's what I mean. You know, I got, I got, I got, I got my airplay right. anyway. You know, it's, it's going to get some airplay. Yes. That. <laughs> well, I can't tell you. You know, we have the show uh, Sunday nights, uh, eight till ten is when we run it, and people absolutely love it. And I think that, you know, it is that uh, variety of music that that keeps people. Uh, excited about listening each week and I know that that's important to you because if there's anybody that continues to shine a light uh, Stephen on on bands and artists that really didn't get the attention they deserve you're the guy doing it and it's it's you know from from my end of things I listen each week like everybody else because I don't know what's going to get played I could sure I could certainly look at the playlist but what's the fun in knowing you know what I mean yeah, it's like yeah, good 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 I'm glad you do that yeah no we're very proud we, you know we, we, we we've uh, introduced 700 new bands. Wow. And, uh, what are you doing? What happened? Oh, hold on. Sure. Oh, there was water in her water dish. Don't let it be on the floor. Hang on, my dog's running wild here. No problem. Okay, I'm only live on the radio here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's anyway, sorry about that. No, it's okay. Uh, I understand. <laughs> I got my dog at the studio today. <laughs> oh, seven, doggy, doggy sitting. 700 bands introduced yeah. on the radio show is unbelievable. Yeah, we've introduced over 700 bands. Uh, somewhere over 700. Wow. Um, you know, so that's, you know, it's nice. I mean, you know, I, I wish I could say that, you know, by 
by playing them, people are, you know, buying them, but that's just, you know, not not really happening anymore. But at least sometimes uh, promoters will hear the bands and stick them on festivals and things yep. like that, you know. So we do what we can do, you know. And you don't have any plans to slow down or not do the radio show, right? I mean, I don't want to... Oh, no. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that, that's, that's my pride and joy. I mean, uh, without this radio show, I mean, keep, you know, keep in mind, you, you, we, we do introduce lots of new bands, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. But we're also the only one playing the, the, the great older bands, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we're the only ones playing uh, Cheap Trick's new album or when Joan Jett puts out a new album or mm -hmm. uh, Paul McCartney's new single or Ringo or the Rolling Stones, you know? Who's playing the Rolling Stones? You know, nobody. Yeah. You know? Except no. Me and you. I know, right? right. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like uh, Blue and Lonesome comes out, and it's just, you know... I guess I'm very fortunate in what I get to do, and I and I don't take it for granted. And um, you know, I, I had a similar conversation with a, a mutual friend, and that's Alice Cooper. We have his radio show, and and I said, Alice, you know, when it comes time to to doing a new record, because he's a guy that always wants to keep working and trying things. I said, I can promise you that you know you'll have airplay in the state of Iowa at the very least. And you know, it, I go back and forth because Stephen, I had George Thorogood tell me. Essentially, people just want to show up to a concert and hear the hits. Why would he record new music? But then at the same time, it seems like recording new music is maybe one of the best ways to stay fresh, isn't it? Well, of course. Yeah, that's a, that's a silly way to look at things. I mean, you know, uh, you know, it depends on what reason you got into it in the first place, I guess. You know, you know what I mean? Um, I've never been, uh, you know, uh, judging my my creative career mm -hmm. based on anything, you know, the sure. industry or an audience or anything else. I mean, you know, obviously you hope you hope there's an audience for what you do, and there better be some kind of audience for what you do, or, or else, you know, you ain't going to keep doing it very long. Right. But, um, yeah, you got to keep creating all the time and, 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 and keeping that, keeping, uh, keeping those muscles, uh, you know, working. Um one way or the other, and, and you know the audience. You know if you have a if you have a, you know it depends on how good you are live. You know I mean we you know I mean I just did a show in London, mm -hmm. my first show you know in a long time, and you know I don't have any hits really. So you know I, I got a I got a uh, smattering of fans out there, but sure. basically I had a I had to sell every single song mm -hmm. as we played it. You know what I mean? You had to win 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 the people over every single song, which we did. Yeah. You know? Uh, so I think it helps, you know, to come from the place where we come from, which is coming from a live place, you know. Yep. We, you know, we had to make a living being a live band before we ever came near a studio. Sure. You know, and that and that that goes a long way, I think, towards uh, making a living. You know, we were we were making a good living uh, before we were in the music business. You know, and uh, so so that 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 stays with you forever. And, and so you know. You gotta, you know, you gotta keep yourself amused and keep yourself in, in, entertained and keep yourself interested. And, and uh, you know, there's always there's always uh, new new things to try out, new things to do. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something you should, everybody should, should continue to do. I mean, uh, you know, even Paul McCartney, you know, I mean, he, he doesn't have to do anything new. You know what I mean? He right. obviously can just go out and do those. The, Beatles hits and wings, and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, he's still doing new things. And Ringo too, and you know, and they they, they had great things on on their, on their last album. Absolutely, you know? yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I think that the Paul McCartney song he did for uh, that video game thing was one of the best things he's done in you know decades. It was just fantastic, you know. But you know, we're the only ones playing it. So, you know, it's good that we were able to say thank you to them. Well, the Zombies last year. They yes. Come out with a new single, right? right. That was you know? so good, yeah. It was great, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, it's legitimately great. We're not just playing it for nostalgia reasons, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Santana came with a new single. Yeah. You know? We play that. Uh, obviously, Jeff Beck continues to make great records. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't believe the Grammys ignored him completely. It's yeah. Really, I really, really a shame. That is disappointing. I I. I I don't understand how that happens because it it wasn't even good. It was just like on another level. I don't yeah. know. I mean, if you you know go see him live now, he's he literally is on another planet. I mean, <laughs> he he has just never stopped improving. You know, it's scary actually. You know? <laughs> I just spent some time with him in England at that same that same blues festival. Yeah, because you know 
me and Richie Sambora and Jimmy Page are there, you know, with our mouths open, <laughs> watching Jeff Beck. Like, can you believe this guy? You know. So you know. Uh, yeah. To, anyway, but but you know, the, but these are the records. You know, that's the other side of what we do. You know, what I mean, we we right. yes, we do the best new bands, and nobody's playing anything new, obviously, but us. Mm-hmm. But also the older bands that are still. Doing good things, you know. Yeah, so, you they, know. they continue too, and I, and I'm so glad that you appreciate it, and and that that's your mentality. Um, in the last few minutes, I want to ask seriously. Uh, I I loved Lily Hammer, and it went away. And I know that you're a creative guy. Can you tell me that you have something coming to TV or streaming or Netflix <laughs> soon, please? Well, <laughs> it's a shame these days. Everything takes way too long you know it's really a tragedy because uh less great things get done because of all of the uh bean counters and uh you know accountants and lawyers that run the business now you know they they it's it's it it takes so long to get something going so I'm working on it I got you know I got 25 different treatments I got five completed scripts wow. uh I got you know I got all kinds of stuff ready to go but uh haven't quite landed anything yet, so you know, trying. But it's gonna be it's gonna be another year or two, probably. Oh, I kind of. It's just oh. it's it's crazy because Lily Hammer was so good, and I don't know. I was very upset that they. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I was too. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> I'm proud of that, and that's a once in a lifetime gig. You know, you're never gonna. <laughs> Star in it and right. you know co-write it, co-produce it. <laughs> I directed the last episode. Uh, I did all the music. You know, I mean that's not going to happen too often. You know, uh, it was just such a perfect last episode too with the, uh, with Bruce and Paul and uh, Tony. Excuse me, just ah uh, man, I just <laughs> it was so perfect. Um, it shows you the possibilities, right? I know <laughs> what could come. I know. I know, and it was Bruce, not just. Playing Bruce, he had a you know he was a hitman for God's yeah. sakes. Yeah, Ugh, it was wonderful. Um, the last thing I want to ask you is, uh, I, I feel like, and I don't know if you have done this or if you've thought about it, and it's not because of what Bruce just did, but why don't you write a book? I mean, you have your uh, your story in particular is the the body of work that you have, Stephen, is so diverse that it seems like. As a fan and a friend, I feel like I would I would read the whole thing cover to cover because it's very it's so fascinating. Well, I I I, I tried you know about five years ago. Yeah. I, I uh, wrote a couple of hundred chapters, and um, you know it's, it's difficult because it just it just felt like it was just too soon. You know, just sure. you know, I didn't quite. Uh, first of all, I don't, I don't quite have the happy ending yet, <laughs> you know, so right. I'm not sure where that's going to go. <laughs> but uh, it was also difficult to find the voice I liked, you know, because I liked I liked the first person. I also liked the third person, and and I was doing every other chapter, first person, third person. You know, it's kind of a freaky kind of a yeah. concept. Um, you know, and in the end, I just was like, you know what, this is just it just it just feels like it's too soon. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I just gave the money back, <laughs> but uh, some someday, you know, someday I might, uh, I might do it. You know, I probably should do it the way other people do it, which is just getting somebody else to, you know, talk talking to somebody else and letting them letting them write it. But I just I I always prefer the the third you know the third person type of you know, yeah. the, uh, the you know the biographer doing it. Um. You know, rather than yourself, and and I know most publishers, you know, they they want they want you doing it, but um, you know, I just when I when I read when I read them, you know, those are those are my, my favorite ones are the ones that other other people write, you know. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I understand. It, it's definitely an. It seems to be like an easier read. Um, and, and I get that, and I hope that you do do it one day. Well, listen, I want to say thanks for the time. I appreciate it. I cannot wait to hear uh, Disciples of Soul and get a copy of that. And, and and for folks listening, you got to check out Wicked Cool Records. And, of course, Little Stevens Underground Garage, Sunday nights, 8 till 10. What do you do for Christmas? Any big plans? you have everybody over or what? No, I usually, uh, it's right around that time, I got my my new thing I'm doing is Little Stevens Policeman's Ball, so I do a, a fundraiser for the widows and orphans uh, uh, police in New York City. Mm-hmm. I spent some time in London, you know, over the holidays lately, but 
uh, you know, we'll have to see the timing of the of the uh, fundraiser this year. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing, you know, the last couple of years, and uh, you know, not so much a family thing anymore. You know? Sure. But uh, yeah, I've done enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, I know what you mean. Well, I'll say thanks because uh, my dad's been a Chicago cop for like over thirty years. So that, to hear that you do that. Uh, oh for, yeah, that's yeah. great, man. Yeah, we do with like the, the first or second biggest fundraiser for police. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well. It's, uh, you know, locally I have a lot of friends that are cops and, and sheriff's deputies and obviously growing up with a police officer as a father, it's, uh, let, well, let me just say this. I, uh, if I could quote my grandpa, I don't have the coyones or the stones to be a cop. So <laughs> I got nothing but respect for the guys that do it. And, uh, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. It's, yeah. And I just, you know, I just felt like, you know, with all the bad publicity, you know, they've been getting, you know, mm-hmm. uh, lately, you know, I just felt it was good to. Somebody needed to come on the other side and say, you know, wait a minute, you know, yeah. one one percent of one percent of one percent, you know, <laughs> are, are doing the wrong thing. And yeah, what about the other you know, ninety nine point nine 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 yeah. nine? You know, no, uh, you know. So it was just time to like make a statement from the entertainment world, from the, from the other side, you know, from from the you know uh, from the left, if you will, mm-hmm. that uh, that you know we appreciate what the police do also, and uh, how hard their job is, and uh, so it's been very successful. Yeah, it's been good. Well, I'm glad you're doing that, and uh, keep it up, man. I, I'm so happy to have your show on the radio and to have met right. you. You tell you tell Alice that uh, you know we'll uh, we'll put my whole network behind his record. Don't worry. I will absolutely, and uh, and thanks again for taking the time before the two shows this year. It was it was a real treat, and uh, I wish you nothing but the best, buddy. Thank Anytime, you so much. Man. Happy holidays to you and, and all the listeners out there. Take care, Stephen. All right, man. See you, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.